The following is an encore presentation of New Expressions. And it is 10 a.m. Friday morning, which means New Expressions time. Yay, every week. Uh, every Rima, Friday, every week. Yes. Every week, yes. Friday, Rima.cc. Yes. You can listen to us online. Mm-hmm. You can listen to us tuned in 94.9. However you're listening to us, you know it's New Expressions time. Time where we basically chop off an hour of bragging on Jesus and all that he's doing. On the Central Coast, it's a wonderful, wonderful time just to be celebrating all the stuff that's happening in the kingdom. In the studio with us today, incredible, Fiona Blair. Yay. Welcome, Fiona. Thank you. should call you uh, Reverend, the the right Reverend most, <laughs> I don't know, what's the proper, I, what's the proper gig? The, oh, I just, Fiona's fine. It's yeah. funny, though, my, um, my beautiful neighbours where I come from, um, call me the uh, Archbishop of Terry Hills, which is absolutely ridiculous, isn't it, really? <laughs> Wow. I love That's it. the funniest thing. Or That's I get called I the it. vicar, one or the other. Do yeah, they release yeah, balloons yeah, yeah. when they say that? <laughs> release the balloons. <laughs> yeah, the no, but they, they the are prepared to make me um, dog collars out of margarine tubs. <laughs> they've given that a go. Okay. Right? Yeah, they've given that a go. Wow, <laughs> impressive. Very <laughs> impressive. I know um, Andrew Humphreys, the salvo officer up at Long Jetty, is often referred to as the Bishop of Long Jetty. <laughs> and you've got the Archbishop ca- covered off down in uh, Terry Hills, you were saying. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so fun, 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 fun. Hey, listen, we had the privilege of meeting up several months ago. Mm. Um, yep. and don't ask me when, but <laughs> what I do remember is it was just a brilliant yeah. kingdom conversation. Yeah. Um, a mate of ours, a, fr- a mutual friend of ours in Sydney had said, oh, Fiona's engaged with the Uniting Church yep. and uh, and specifically doing some really creative kingdom things mm. uh, that are across the Central Coast as well. That is the reach of your portfolio. Yep. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, what it is that, uh, you know, yep. you're doing or, or who you are or like how you came to be connected in the Uniting Church yep. movement and a little yep. bit of your journey. I'd love to. Oh, hang on. Release the balloons. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, we, yeah, all the good. balloons are gone, man. The balloons are up. They're good up in the go. air. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, look, I actually came to a personal a personal faith in the Lord when I was 21 yep. at Terrigal Uniting Church. That's just up the road. In just fact, Terrigal Uniting Church. We had Richard Harris in here oh, yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. He's the, the yeah, senior he's the minister, minister there. Great right. guy. Shout out for Richard. Yeah, that's it. So, so that's I where was, you were. That's where I, at, I was there. A twenty-one year old. As a twenty-one year old, um, on my uni break. Yeah. Um, my folks were had not long started going to that church, and um, we'd moved out from the country into the central coast, and so my folks grew up with an understanding that when you move into a new place, if you come to a new town, you go to church. Yeah. It's how you build community. That's how that's you. Where you meet everybody. That's where you meet everybody. <laughs> that was certainly the way they operated, and they were quite insistent that I needed to come to church. And it was actually Easter Sunday morning. So right. you met everybody. I mean, everybody. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, Father, Father Son, Son, and yeah. Holy Spirit. Yes. You know what? I met the hardcore ones because it was a six a.m. service. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. six a.m. Hey, on Easter Sunday morning, and I wasn't actually really um, someone who was closely following the Lord or or loving that whole thing. So I rocked in pretty dusty on that morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'd been out the night before. My <coughs> mum and dad were just like, you know what, you're going to come to church. At 6 a.m.? <laughs> At 6 a.m., a 21 a year old. sobering moment. <laughs> <laughs> and there I was, and within moments, um, all I know was that we were a bit late, so I had to walk down the front church and sit in the front row and the the minister stood there in front of me in a robe and sandals and uh, after that and sandals whoa yeah also ministers too but um just spoke began to spoke and begin to speak and just the holy spirit fell on me and i started to weep wow i heard god speaking to me about some stuff about prayer Mm. um about the value that he places upon my life value that i had no concept of and um that was this an a massive turnaround um in my life as you could imagine utterly transformative um so i walked out of that service still visibly shaken and and moved by the presence of god in that service having heard nothing of what was really said or yeah. what had gone on but just had really powerfully encountered um the <coughs> presence of god and wow. and left um and and just then had to figure out what had happened really 
And I spent about two weeks figuring out what had happened. And I met a really dear friend at a coffee shop in Penrith, actually. It was called City Extra. You might, might know about City Extra. There's one in, certainly one down Circular Quay. Mm, yeah. But I just, I rolled out the whole story to her. Her name's Tess. And I said, Tess, I've got to tell you what's happened to me. And she's a beautiful Catholic girl, r- born and bred, beautiful parents, wonderful family who I'd grown up with really closely. And she just looked at me and she said, oh, my God, you're a born-again Christian. <laughs> And I just went, yes, that's it. I think that's right. That's it. Release the balloons. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and, and, wow. and then what followed was just a, a string of amazing things. Um, a call to, to be a missionary. Mm, wow. Um, I, I went and did some um, missionary Bible college, um, which meant actually stopping my uni studies. Anyway, it just turned my life around so wow. completely, just throwing everything in the air. And I think for my family, they're just like, whoa, what has happened here, you know? What have they um, created? Yeah, what has gone on? What has come into church on Sunday morning at Easter? Yeah. Do I just, like, just meant to start behaving yourself yeah. a bit more. We couldn't get her to stay home. Now we can't get her to stay home. <laughs> but, you know, that's right. But we really saw all of my family, like, either came to a personal faith for the first time or renewed a faith in the wow. Lord and wow. massive family transformation. We became a family that discipled one another. Wow. You know, okay. so my dad would get me on the phone and say, Fee, can you pray for him about this? Because I'm just not sure what to do here. Yeah, and beautiful. that was something that was, was really new for us as a family. Yeah. Yeah. So well, with rich. family members, when you lead the way, when they yeah. call up for prayer, you have to remember to take a tithe offering first. <laughs> or else it doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's, that's a tip for all you kids out there when it happens. That's a tip. I didn't warn you, Fiona, no, about no. this guy. That's that's off the you reservation, know, I, I isn't know, it? I know. That is you off know. the reservation. You're teaching so, him. You're you know. teaching him. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You're teaching him about yeah. tithing, yeah. sowing, reaping. That's it's better it. to give. Yeah. 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 <laughs> into my missions again so, <laughs> so yeah. that I can go away again. So you <laughs> wandered good. in the church, yeah. 6 a.m., from yeah. going out the night before, yeah. and without hearing anything, it starts, and then the waterworks come on, and yeah. the emotion. See, that only happens in a nightclub in church. <laughs> so, and I've met people to where the story yeah. is similar. Yeah. Common and story. It ha- yes, it happens. Common story. Yes, exactly. Yeah. My son, yep. as a five-year-old, um, started experiencing that same yeah. thing in church well he didn't go off the night before he went to bed the night before but crying not knowing yeah, what it was yeah. not knowing any emotion you know yeah. god just does that work eternally and sometimes you know we need to release yeah before we can actually Absolutely. begin to understand and take you oh, got you got totally. all that stuff go down yeah that's yeah. It. it was actually wow. it was like water from within having to come up and yes you know when you've, you you got to flush out pipes every now and mm-hmm. again there's a stuff and it was like living water just had to bubble up mm. and come out beautiful and Beautiful. I, and I did. It did. You know. Wow. And it was it was very visible. Like I was conscious that I was that person on the front that whose shoulders kept moving yeah. up and down, so yeah. you couldn't hide what was going on. You know, it was messy. Ooh. Yes, it was messy. But yeah, um, it always is. Yeah, but it thank God, is. you know. Yes. No idea what the sermon was about. You can be no. pretty confident it was something. Pretty sure it was resurrection-ish. With, well, you, you know, probably. Pretty much. And, and you know, Easter and all. Fairly oh, yeah. sure it was but, resurrection-ish. Oh, yeah. yeah. New life-ish. Oh, I'm pretty sure yes. it was all those things. We were, we're at a church last night. Um, Dave blessed you. And I'd gone down to a church in Sydney. David was preaching, ministering. Took a company of prophets with him from Hope UC. And we're in this church and we had some worship. And, and they were ready. Like, they kind of given Dave the mic. Kind of, like, we're ready for the word. And it was like, no, nah, we just have to stay here. And the presence wow. of God was just doing such. And he just facilitated space. Mm-hmm. It was almost like, mm-hmm. I don't even know if I'm going to get to preach a word. Because <laughs> what's going on right now is what he wants to do and it sounds like irrespective of what yeah. was going on he was doing that's what he it. wanted to do in that's your right. life in that moment yeah. wow, wow. So that's cool. a beautiful yeah. thing and so it kind of began so you become this weird born again I, uh, that's right <laughs> that's what happened You've seen that before and, somewhere yeah. and there was more of it there was there was visions there was things that happened and if we had time i could tell you like just what it was to be a crazy disciple learning about what it was yeah. to follow in the footsteps of a lord and let me tell you, most of the time, it was A for effort and D for achievement. <laughs> 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 Nearly the entire time. Like, I just got so many things wrong. Yeah. But, but despite that, um, there was a heart that I had that I just wanted mm. to seek the Lord. I yeah. just wanted to seek yeah. his face always. That's just what was p- set before me. And 
that was what I went after. And like I said, I, I, I seriously got stuff wrong. I got, like, even just, just moving into prophetic stuff, yep. you know, yeah. I, I believe I was given a grace to explore what that was. And yeah. there was, um, we, we did a little mission trip out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, a place called Hilston. And we did a children's day program out there coming from Terrigal Uniting. And we got out there for the week and we just had the most beautiful time. <coughs> excuse me and we shared with kids and had some great ministry and blah 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 and we came to the end of it having our closing prayer time and I sat in this beautiful little church that, that um, was raised up off the ground and just had like a grid for a floor because it was so hot you know we sat in this baking hot little chapel and just giving thanks to God <coughs> just yeah. giving thanks for all that had been like not 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 live, making sure that the glory was entirely his for all that had happened mm. over those few days and um, and I had, I had a vision. I, I, I saw very clearly that um, certain aspects of my life flashing before me again. I know it sounds a bit cliched, but then there was this incensed light that just filled me and surrounded me. And I heard the Lord say, Fiona, you're right in the center of my will. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. Praise God. What an affirmation that was. Yeah. Like I was only a month a Christian. <laughs> and I'm sitting here in this old little rundown place in the it's middle wonderful. of nowhere. Praise and yet God. I took it so literally. Yeah. I went straight to the pastor and I said, oh, it's like Paul's Macedonian call. <coughs> right, right. I'm called to Hilston. Because yeah. oh, God has said, oh, you were right. right in the centre of my will. <laughs> in this location. Right in here. This I know. How crazy. And so I'll take up senior oh, pastoral right. role here uh, tomorrow. And do you know what he said? God hasn't told me that. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, just just that enthusiasm that yeah. was nothing but the Lord, <laughs> nothing Beautiful. but. Amen. Like you know, so yeah, some crazy Amen. times as a disciple. A for effort, D for achievement. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest is the right Reverend Fiona Blair. Release the balloons. Well, we're here in the Rima. .cc new expressions program which is on every Friday morning 10 a.m. and uh, in the studio with us today Fiona Blair from the right reverend the most incredibly reverend and all of that uh, uh, from Shall the we release the balloons again? Yeah, release we those did, balloons we release again. The balloons yeah, yeah, they're yeah, flying yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fiona um, Blair Fiona's with like Uniting Church time. and uh, and we're just talking off air a moment ago about this kind of broad reaching space that mm. you you're serving in within the context of Uniting Church uh, and we're discussing you know before we went to the break your, your experience your radical mm -hmm. experience yep, of being born again uh, yeah. by the spirit of god on a on a, an easter sunday morning service a 6 a.m service and uh and uh and everything yeah. everything changed yeah, everything changed right. <laughs> utterly turned around all of that and yeah and and it's it's really been of course that story that the lord takes us on that mm, journey you yeah. know it's it starts before we're born but you know that moment was so um, was really that turning point. You know, that moment was that was that that recognition that I think sometimes happens for people slowly and differently. But certainly for me, there was just this unique bang of who God was in my life released, and that sense of what I was called to do. And and I think more than anything, really, was um, that sense of being loved and valued. And and that was. That's something that, you know, your parents can instill in you and you can receive from community well, and yeah. family and friends. But actually when God releases that through yeah. in and through you, that is something altogether. Amen. Amazing. Isn't it? Amazing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? The foundational truth yeah. formed yes. in you. That's right. In, in the inmost being yeah. of, of who you are, your identity in him. It's You're exactly. a happy, happily kicking along a, as a uni student studying away and then he interrupts everything. That's and right. You said you went off to Bible college. I mean, yep. At some point you've... You found a, a, a life partner as well. Yep, and that's right. So, um, sort of, I've been married now for nearly twenty years. Well, so Mike well, is well, my husband. We're going to get the story about how you guys no, met. Oh, well, that's you know. a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he stole your lunch or something. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no um, I actually, you know, I spent I spent quite a number of years in that early discipleship, um, being called in onto the mission field and t to be, you know, um come to understand what it was to be to be um, a, a child of God and get yeah. into the scriptures and have yeah. a, a massive learning curve, massive learning curve that did involve some formalised study, involve some time on the mission field and then... That's um, international mission too, isn't it? Yep. yep and, so and did you do YWAM stuff? Is that your story So that too? came a little bit later on. That was something that so we did as a family. But yeah, wow. I actually went to World Harvest Institute, which was the AOG program yeah. for how they would prepare their missionaries to be sent and how they would also equip their missionaries on furlough. 
So so I did that and So I guess most most Uniting Church members go through that <laughs> that particular No. No. <laughs> it was a little bit unusual. It was a little Is bit it? of an unusual path to take, but really um, it was just it was just what the Lord had for me in terms yeah. of how he would expand and develop and yeah. and grow and encourage me. And so um yeah, there are some there are some quirky, funky bits of the story and one <laughs> of them was World Harvest Institute. So it was wow. Wow. Yeah. come on now. Well and then I know you are, and so then after we were married, yeah. um we went to a beautiful church in Hornsby and with three small children, aged mm-hmm. four, six and eight, um, they sent us to India and we did our DTS with YWAM and continued to serve there for a while. How long? Six months for the DTS yep. and then some, some service that happened afterwards yeah. to as long as our visas and that those sorts of situations yeah. would allow for yeah. us. Yeah. And so that was the most amazing family adventure of wow. faith you could ever wow. imagine, you know. I can just uh, our just little ones wow. we lived we lived on a base but we really um, we were very closely connected with Islam and and lived just an amazing life in community. Beautiful. Surrounded by teaching and and wow. what it was to be, you know, serving in a far, in a, in another culture, yep. serving cross culturally. Um, Which just, city were you in? Um, so we were we were in a hill station outside of Mumbai, right. but I guess um, if we were more in a city, it was the city of Pune was one of the mm-hmm. key cities we were in. We were also travelled to other places, were involved in other types of um, mission and that kind of thing across the whole nation. So. And, and you're on a YWAM basis? Uh, yeah, a base, on, on a yeah. YWAM base. And, and how many were on that base? Like I think the base yeah, has, family, yeah. yeah. So the base caters for up to probably two hundred um, yeah, wow. people there at any one time, and that would fluctuate depending on what schools were on offer. Sometimes there would be a school of worship alongside a DTS. Other times there'd be a right. school of biblical studies or whatever yeah. was going, what, whatever the program was. But as you could, or as you may or may not know, um, India is a very, very multicultural country. Mm. You know, you could. You could come from um, Nagaland in the far north and know nothing about a Keralite who comes from the south, and mm. you have your you have your own very distinct culture and food and traditions and language, and so we we experienced such rich multicultural experience mm. there wow. on the base, even though we were kind of in the same in the yeah. same country. Mm. Um, and then we we um, had just some awesome privilege of being involved in church planting wow. in and around that area. Mm. Um, working very closely with the the local people and what their heart was for the kingdom and where they were seeing God at work and we were mm. just really coming alongside encouraging them and just often providing um, prayer, support, yeah, yeah. nurture, love, you know, go team, you know, encouragement. Mm. Um, and whenever we were asked to do something, you know, we were just delighted to, to teach or to pray and... Um, a lot of it we did on foot, a lot of it was in rural settings and we just had some of the most profound experiences and and experiences that had to shape, um, I think, our understanding as a family of what worship is really like and mm. what the presence what the presence of God, what it really means to experience the presence of God. And I was starting to wow. realise that we were becoming people that that experienced God in one context and one context only, and that wow. was in the corporate setting of church. Yeah, that, that was where we thought it happened. Right, that was where there was a certain um, kind of. It was kind of like beautiful, like there was mood lighting and <laughs> there was like good music playing, yeah. and you'd go, "Wow, God is so here, and God is real, and God is revealing Himself to us, and this is beautiful." But then you find yourself in a slum in India mm. at night time where there's no mm. power mm. and you are um, sitting in amongst all the rubbish that's being collected for those people who live there and have that as a source of income. Mm. And all you have is a candle and before you know it, there was six of you, but now there's like 80 of you mm. because people just are attracted Gravitate. to what God is yep. actually doing where we're sharing a little tiny bit of the word and I'm talking just some of the simplest stories in the gospel. And um, I sit there thinking to myself with, you know, one ch- a child either side of mm, me and mm. I had my son would delight in picking up ants and dropping them on the candle flame. I'm like, Harry, yeah. that's not cool. It was a four, yeah, six, eight-year-old. Eight it would have been nothing but fun. That's right. Someone just, always you know had that to little be, smell that when yeah, they burn? Yes. Yeah, you know it. They would have just been having fun. So much fun. Uh-oh. 
and the little one on my lap just has to insist on holding the Bible but waves it in front of the flame. And, <laughs> you know, you sit here and you go, Lord, how could you possibly, like, how could you possibly turn up here? And I was so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was, was nice a... of you to turn up here, Fiona, because <laughs> right. I've been That's here all yeah, along. I know. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, sometimes it, again, such a, such a A for effort, D for achievement, you know, <laughs> but just this real sense that, like, God is not inhibited by any of that. In fact, his presence was so strong and so real and healings would happen and lost people would be found and mm. signs and wonders yeah. would da- take place in that setting yeah. when I think we'd actually thought it really only happened in other contexts, you yeah, know, yeah. more beautiful ones or something, you know. Yeah. So that was such a good teaching for us. We really learned what it was to be worshippers <coughs> and to to expect the presence of God in the most unexpected of places. Yeah. And that was something that we as a, fam- a family came to really know. And what a privilege. And, yeah. I, and I'm, as yeah. you're saying that, I'm thinking, you know, listeners across the coast right now, you know, this is this is so, so key, you know, mm. like the presence of God, uh, you know, at home and during the shopping yep. and at, you know, school exactly pick up right. and, I mean, yep. the context of you as a, a light carrier, you as a carrier of the kingdom of God and and the missional God who's at work in those That's those right. contexts, you know, um, an awareness of his presence. What a beautiful mm. thought. Mm. Families, mm. hey, you know, yeah. like, oh, maybe maybe mm. we can press past the parking the kids in kids' <laughs> church whilst, Ooh, you know. Yeah. Or you walk in the coals with six people and then all of a sudden there's 80 when you get to the uh, Come on. <laughs> I know. I know. As long as you're at the front of those 80. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so, you know, what what an incredible diverse experience of, mm. you know, this a power encounter of the Spirit of God at Terrigal Uniting Church, uh, some training and equipping in the AAG ministry field and then off to international missions and and then somehow there's a reconnection with the, the Uniting Churches. That's exactly right. Yeah. There was just I think in all of those situations that I had been in my you know, in that in that seeking God's face in all of that, there was that question would constantly arise for me, Lord, is this the time and the place that you mm. really want me to step into what I knew that I'd been called to, which was, you know, a type of full time ministry. Yeah, you know, yeah. paid or unpaid, it didn't matter, but I knew that there was a calling that was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and every time I, I would ask that question, I, it was just my it was my annual retreat time was seeking the Lord over that and and I we came back from India and within six months um, we just waited we just waited on the Lord for six months. He said, Lord, may the mm. work appear before the hands of your servants. We, yeah, we don't know what the next thing is, but you do and we'll just wait upon you. And in that time, um, I was asked if I would like to apply for a role at Pittwater Uniting Church as a youth missions pastor. Mm-hmm. And um, I really knew straight away that that was, that that was what I was being called to and that that was the next thing that God had for us. And it was... It was like as I read the job description, I kind of saw a, a cut, a cardboard cut out of myself. I just knew that it was so who I was and what God was now dealing, um, preparing me for. And it was within just a few weeks that I really sensed God saying, "Yeah, Fiona, this is the time and this is the place." And He set a trajectory for you in that yeah. with, with such a sound yeah. and solid and diverse mission base and experience how awesome is that yeah. you know I, I know there's a prophetic grace on you so when we come back after the break we're going to explore what you said okay. God is saying to us because I think that's really important and also explore some more now what this mission work looks like in yeah. the context of Uniting Church on yeah. the coast I guess this morning is the right Royal Reverend <laughs> Princess Fiona <laughs> or Princess Fiona you know Shrek yeah. Princess Fiona you didn't get that. Yeah. Oh, no. All the children out there would have got that. So anyway, okay. Anyway, anyway we, we're, we're not like releasing any balloons Jesus now. We're, we're we keeping the balloons. Come back in. from that. <laughs> right now. We can come back. Amen. We're keeping the balloons. This is an um, exciting conversation, Fiona. Um, in terms of you know your journey and the mm. preparing for ministry and the stepping into a mm. uh, you know a senior pastoral role and then beyond that, it's be, you know it's really ballooned out into a regional responsibility. Mm. We want to explore that in a tick. But before we do, just to just to inquire, I know there's a prophetic grace that's on you and I and I just wonder if you know what what is the what, any sense that you have of what God is saying to us you know in this region on the central coast there's a real awareness of stuff is accelerating but what is mm. that stuff and how do we understand that and what do, what do you mm. is it that you see or you sense from the Lord for yeah. us and you mentioned that I I, I do actually have a, a quite a I have a regional role that covers quite a large distance and Mm, the the Central Coast, particularly the northern region of the Central Coast, 
is the the area that the Uniting Church in our patch, mm. in our presbytery is the, is the technical word, but in our patch that has really been identified as where we need to put energy into that. And I think that's that's come out of a real prayerful searching and a mm. discernment. And mm. I think that as I've moved into this regional role and particularly a focus on the northern region of the Central Coast, I have encountered such a profound appetite um, for for revival, for the new yeah. things of God, for what is going to come and what the Lord is doing in our midst and how that's going to bring renewal. And... Um, a greater receptivity, really, a greater appetite than what I have discerned in other areas yeah. of of my role in other areas of Sydney, and so it's 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 refreshing. It, it, it initially it was um, I wouldn't say confronting, but there was just like such a, a jarring realization that wow, Lord, wow, mm. there is such an appetite wow, here for you. People God. are hungry. Mm. We had a. We had a 14 days of prayer process uh, that involved uh, really all of our region, but really focused on, we've got 14 congregations in the northern region of the Central Coast and really honed in on them and gave them a, a voice to, to say, well, you know, what are they dreaming about? Mm. What's God put in their hearts and yeah. how can we pray for them in a time when they're looking at what is next? Yeah, wow. you know, what is next for, 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 the, for this part of the vineyard yeah. at this time, yeah. at this season? And so that that was um, really fueled a lot of this. But but I think what I'm sensing and and what we're starting to to grapple with and have to have to really press into, is the sense that there is an appetite and um, that that we have to that we have a responsibility in some ways to be responsive to that. Mm. That of course um, people are responsible for their own discipleship and and being nurtured and fed by the Lord. But there is also a role that the church is called to. Um, that leadership is called to, um, to be able to present to people something that is going to nourish and be, be, be what it is that draws, draws them further into the things of God, that the things, the gracious things that we will put on that table, um, the gracious things wow. that we will offer those hungry and thirsty people as they are saying and looking for leadership in this space, you know. Mm. I believe there's a... There is such a need for for an uprising of leadership. I mean, globally, there is like, mm. like a bit of a leadership void, as the things I hear. But but we see it in in our own spaces that that people are saying, you know, we're looking to to what God has next, and we're looking to our leaders to help move us into that, to to release us to do those things, to create structures that allow for a movement to take place, rather than structures that are rigid and restrictive. Yeah. And I think in some ways that is. Um, being where the, the the church has sometimes been at, um, when there's a new or fresh thing that comes, we often don't know how to carry that because our our structures are rigid. Mm. Um, there's too much institutionalness about yeah. um, what it is to be to be God's people in our midst. So. Wow. Mm. And you mentioned off air running a block to some of that stuff, yep. you know, like that yep. might stifle the creative expressions of yep. kingdom in these days. That's right. Yeah. Um. Yep. There, there, there is a part of there's a part of the job that involves that. Like yeah. while while the the church itself, you know, comes to terms with with the things that God is putting before them and 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 is 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 working to, you know, open themselves up to to what God is doing. We are also needing to allow the freshness and this this anointing that's coming through this movement and this desire for new things to flourish, without that stifling and. And in some, and in a lot of cases, we're needing to expand and reorganise the way that we, 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 we operate, the way that we structure yeah. ourselves. Mm. We're needing to, to develop new ways of how we are organised around around being the church to allow this to, you know, we're really creating a new container, if you like. Mm. You know, we're creating a new co- something that will contain, but give complete freedom to. Um, what what this thing that God is wanting to do this this renewal that's taking place? You see, that talks to me of wineskins, and it talks to me yeah. of paradigms, and it talks to me of reformation, and and that's all of the it. things that that we're which hearing is, emerge, which has been a recurring theme yeah, over, isn't the, it? over the months, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? And yeah. and and you know, this is a reformation as a time of of ascension, gift leadership, and apostolic mm-hmm. leadership and function that's emerging. Um, I know that you have a particular passion around prayer and unity. Yeah. Um, 
you know, where do you see things at with that? What are we, you know, what are you seeing? Well, what are we grappling you with? You know, that, that, that's the area that um, those two areas, I think, in order of prayer and then unity are the, the two most contested spaces that we have in terms of our our, um, our, our life as, as Christians. Mm. Um, you know, that we said we did that 14 days of prayer and it was so needed and it was so well received, but it, it, it was a very difficult thing to... <laughs> get off the ground like there was just such a lift a heavy lift it's involved. our two biggest weapons prayer yeah, and unity that's right yeah. and it was um you know maybe w- when the muscles are a, a bit you know not as buff yeah. getting that kind of stuff up off the ground and um and so we saw that that phase two of that that um prayer focus really needed to be um what it was to then seek the other churches of other denominations that were around us and say could you share with us what's on your heart what can we be praying for you about how can we press into the lord about the things that you're seeing the lord wanting to do and Mm. how can we help be part of those answers to prayer in your midst so so that's but again, there's, there's heavy lifting involved, mm. you know. I like what you just said. That's nice, yeah. And just yeah. one of the missions, well, this program here was, was number one to like, let's see what everybody else is doing yeah. and tell everybody else what that one is doing. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. we need to know. And in that, we find what's common, right? And, exactly. And that and that's how I think that the, the prayer and the unity come so hand in hand. And when we begin in the prayer space, it only generally leads to the unity space because... Yeah. The Lord just directs us to that person who's two mm. blocks down the road who's got on their heart the very same thing and when you come and gather to do it together, yeah. you know, that's when there's a bit of revival. There, there, uh, are, uh. there are bookends, <laughs> yeah. but so often neglected or ignored. You know, yeah. prayer sometimes neglected, yeah. I'll get to it when I get to it, and the unity sometimes is just absolutely ignored. Yeah. Last yeah. week we had, um, I was saying with, to Fiona off air, last week we had um, Peter Pollock in the studio, the yeah. evangelist from South Africa, his former you know, test cricket player and captain, chairman of selectors, and he was talking about as a, a travelling evangelist, ap- apostolic kind of leader, that he's constantly finding pastors and leaders who, who can't prioritise prayer and Jesus in, you know, as is the primary priority in their life and mm. it's like wow mm. um you know and and it is a season where i think that the church broadly speaking not not the the paid elite the, i mean the whole bride <laughs> actually being stirred and prompted to to a place of genuine yeah, prayer right. and 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 a, yeah. and a a posture of prayer and, and intercession and uh, a posture of encounter and experience yeah. and hosting his presence all of these things yeah. it's a, a transformative process it's also a process where he's growing and healing uh the saints as well we've got um uh, you know a big thing on the table at the moment is how does the bride here on the central coast authentically navigate mm. a healing journey yeah because uh you know I, I heard yesterday actually one of the guys who who um, is on the the board of the Movement Day um, Unity Movement thing in Australia? He he said the most um, popularly attended elective in Movement Day mm. that was on offer was um, Pastor's Pain. Mm. How's yeah. that? Yeah. Pastor's Pain. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah most yeah. the the most yeah. attended of all the yeah. electives in Movement Day, yeah. and it was like oh wow. And, and essentially, when yeah. pastors have pain, so do congregations. And, uh, you know, the Lord's actually not yeah. going to let us off the hook until no. there's a genuine uh, exploration of his healing yeah. grace yeah. upon the church. That's right. So that's, that's ahead yeah. for us, isn't, yeah. it? isn't yeah. it? Absolutely. That, 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 I mean, that resonates for, for mm. me. I was at a, a, a Uniting Church Leaders Conference in Rabina up on, in, on the, um, in Queensland. And again, you know, just, just overwhelmed mm. when that time came. Mm for ministry to be, mm. uh, you know, ministry to be invited for pastors and their their spouses and their families and the pain that they mm. are going through. Um, you know, three quarters of the room stand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Significant. And, and really significant. Really significant, significant on the coast, you know, it is that, that there are, there, there's a, a real healing journey afoot. The Lord's determined to heal us and to grow us. He's yeah, determined. <laughs> Yep. And it sounds like this appetite, like you, yeah. you know, when, when people are gathering together and praying together, it's it's very hard yep. to be uh, uh, at a place of disunity yep. in a in a place of prayer. Mm. You know, it's actually a, a it fosters. And I, and I think a it's good for us to realise 
that the type of healing that we're talking about too because yeah. often we have a we have a bit of an inclination towards ailment healing right yeah but i think that what what yeah. we're starting to realize and what kind of we're talking about mm. here is this is this is this wholeness yeah yeah is this is this yeah. transformative thing that that doesn't just just touch an ailment but reaches very deep into who we yeah. are and yeah. and brings back that sense of identity that that there is a healed son or there's a healed daughter mm. here that whether it be issues of discouragement or or, or conflict or, or or whatever it might be that yeah. have weighed heavy yeah on on people wow. in ministry has actually um needs to be touched by the lord and i believe that he's really wanting to do that mm, um yeah yeah when we're maybe when we're in the same space together and there's a grace for one another and where we're each at that that will actually be that you know what oh, look I, I have such a confidence of that in mm. these days ahead i know i know that he's brokering amongst senior pastors and leaders on the coast mm -hmm. you know he's prompting i've been talking with several of them recently and the lord's just literally last night another one you know the lord mm -hmm. just spoke to me about a, a, a about a, a an issue between myself and another leader and whatever we need to address those things yeah. and we need to have the eyeball to eyeball you know we hurt each other and now we're going to love each other yeah, and let's let's it. allow the grace of the lord jesus to yeah. to you know do a good work in us yeah. so it's a season for that and that's an exciting thing to be happening there's so many things that are happening on the coast you're you're overseeing you know if you like the missional content yep. expression of the uniting church how many did you yep. say you uh, up on 67 the coast also no so there, there's there's 67 congregations and faith communities in the region that i oversee mm, but wow. from um from narara to warner vale we have 14 congregations yeah, right, right. Yeah. And, and yeah. so engaging with them and yep. and and the pursuit of oneness in that space, yeah. you know, like um, like uh, you know, all due respect, the great things going on in the Uniting Church, but they're not going to win the world by nope. themselves. Not at all. <laughs> and, and no more than the We're, salvos nope, are, that's and right. no more than any yeah. other independent. We don't have the resources or, or the capacity within ourselves to do the things that God's put in our hearts. Yeah. So we're looking left and we're looking right and we're seeing our brothers and sisters around us and say, yeah, how can we do this together? You know, I know the Baptist guys are in that space yeah, as well, looking it. left and right. I, yep. I I, am now regularly at the Baptist Pastors Network meeting and I mean that every time they gather. Yeah, and they kind of Baptist look at me, that, that peculiar uh, <laughs> weird cousin that wears the red shield on his shirt every time he comes to this meeting. <laughs> that dude in the back. Yeah. <laughs> That guy, he keeps coming, you know. <laughs> anyway, and uh, yeah. you know, you, you're connecting in those spaces yeah, as well. It. Fiona, you, 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 the word for the coast that you were bringing to us, the, yeah. the sense of what God's saying, just in a nutshell, in a, in a one in sentence. In a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, that the appetite is great. Yeah. That the receptivity is there. Yeah. That the people are hungry and that the world that we're trying to reach out there, the central coast that we're really trying to reach, is not really understanding like it used to the, the structures that we use and mm. the ways that we've always done things and so what is it that that we're going to put on the table what is it that what is our responsibility to to leave um to to graciously extend what what is the invitation that we're giving uh to those that are seeking to know the lord more deeply or seeking to know the lord maybe for the first time and that, to me, is the question and the discernment I'm, I'm, I'm doing, and that's the work, the deep work I'm doing, so that there is a gracious and profoundly God-ordained offering that is placed on that table as hungry people come, as they come to be filled and come to be nurtured and loved and experience the grace and encounter the presence of God. Yeah, amen. amen. What she said. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you next week, folks. You've been listening to an encore presentation of New Expressions, which can be heard live every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on 94.9 Rima Central Coast.